Hi guys, welcome back to the Mental Health Quarters. My name is Essie and I would like to officially welcome you back to my channel. I would like you to also make sure you subscribe, you hit the bell button so that next time my video goes up, you will be notified. I hope you have been enjoying my video so far. Is there's a video that is your favorite or you really enjoy, feel free to share or comment and like the video too and if you'd like to also be a guest on my channel share your story with me feel free to look at my socials in the description box or send me an email let's talk and let's arrange so that you can come and share your story with us let's get right into the video so it looked like the last time i shared my story with you all a lot of you enjoyed my story and i thought about it why don't i share another story with you about how I found out I have lived experience with bipolar disorder and how I was diagnosed. I've come to realize that every time I go and do a speaking engagement, people ask me that question or they come to me personally to want to know how I got my diagnosis. A lot of you, maybe when I start sharing the story, it's like, oh my God, essay. We've heard this a billion times, but I still have to do it because there are some people who are new here so please just relax there are some things you'll be hearing for the first time so don't run away okay um so in 2015 um i was in my second year at the university of ghana studying french and linguistics i was 21 no i was 20 at the time yes when um, my relationship with my ex at the time had to end I ended the relationship myself forgetting that the same person I was ending things with someone like I really loved and also somebody who was my friend who was validating me who was making me feel happy is the same person so it's like I just fired the person I hired to do the job of being there for me and so when the relationship ended I couldn't imagine that wow so this is how life outside this relationship is like no calls no texts nobody to rant about your day to and all of that it took a huge toll on me mentally at the time I didn't know I was sliding into depression so depression is basically lost apart from sadness it's also loss of interest in activities you once enjoyed or you are required to do so on campus i could not bath i could not brush my teeth i couldn't i didn't have those edges to go for lectures my daily life was basically interrupted and so with the support of my friends and my roommates i was able to get through the semester but what happened was um this all happened from march till about may june yeah so in june i had to come home for the long vacation and so even when i was let me tell you something when i was even going through depression i thought oh i'm only feeling this way because the relationship i really loved had ended and i was feeling that it was all my fault because i ended things with this person first the person didn't do anything wrong to me i was feeling guilty about it and i was thinking what would people say if they find out that my perfect relationship had ended and someone may be wondering why did you end your relationship so i ended my almost two-year relationship with this person because i had my own fears and insecurities that maybe the relationship will end soon because my my roommate dropped a hint like it's a long story but basically i just i just felt like maybe ending this relationship with the person first would, would the damage wouldn't be much and so um should i tell you okay let me let me just so that nobody will be confused so my ex at the time was friends with a, a lady in my school my ex was in my school so i was just um i was happy for him i used to ask him about the girl we used to laugh about it and all of that i used to joke with him and i did not see any problem there and one time my roommate made a comment like wow what if he leaves you and goes in for this girl 
and that's when I, I was scared I was scared that okay in order for no, for that not to happen let me break up with him first in case it happens because I all my life I was insecure I looked on myself I had been very complex and for the first time in my life it felt like I had something good and if it wasn't going to be permanent then let me make the decision myself to um, to check out first mm, so that I'll be on a safer side yeah so that was why I ended the relationship and my ex too at the time said he used to tell me if we ever break up like there's no part two no remix and so every time I would beg that we should come back together he would say no 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 and so <laughs> You know, coming to that realization that the relationship had ended, I I felt it was my fault. I was carrying the burden and the guilt, and I was I felt it felt very different and very as if I was incomplete. I I did not know how life was going to be after this person. Will I be able to move on? I felt like I had lost my husband because I thought this was going to be my husband and my life was over. It might sound weird to some people, but if you have been in my situation, you understand where I'm coming from. And so, um, when I, I'll take you back, when I had to come home for vacation, I was, I didn't want, like, especially my family to know what I was going through. Because by the time I was about to come home, it started looking like I was losing my mind, I was losing myself. You know that thing where people say they are dying when they were they had a near-death experience and they saw a light or a door and it was like they were going to move to another world and it got sucked back right to it for me i could see myself like walking on the streets naked i could see myself lying in a casket at my funeral so it was three things either i would die either i would go I hate to do that way, but it's like either I become a vagrant on the street, or and after that, eventually I wouldn't be able to graduate. So I could tell I was acting really weird. I was having trouble sleeping. I was having trouble communicating with people. I did not feel like myself anymore. I was just it was as if slowly, slowly, slowly I was losing my sanity going into a different world and i could feel it i could realize that i'm not i don't feel like myself i don't feel like the way i used to be and so hmm, you know at home you can't really hide how you are my house is very small so everybody can so it's not like some upstairs downstairs situation where you can hide somewhere nobody will know what you are going through so my brother realized in the night i had trouble sleeping i'll be talking and what i'm saying to doesn't add up i was my parents from the same thing and during the day i would want to run out of the house naked or and i was doing these things because a voice kept on telling me like maybe put your hands in the fire like or they got like the banner mm -hmm, or run out of the house naked nobody will even realize it it's like the things i'm supposed to do the normal and good things i'm supposed to do that voice will not tell me to do that but the things i'm not supposed to do that's what the voice will tell me to do and i actually felt like doing those things rather and so that long vacation i couldn't do my internship you know there was no way I could do internship and so um I remember we started moving from church to church to make sure that I get the help I need. And so I decided that I will go to, after going to different churches and not getting the, I'll get a, some relief. It helped, it helped in my recovery in a way. As it wasn't like a long lasting solution for me at the time. But I believe all those prayers we prayed helped with my road to recovery the next stage in a sense that my father decided that we should seek professional help so we went to see a psychiatrist who um, looking at my signs my symptoms they did my blood work at a different hospital labs x-rays ekg all those things just to rule out any physical conditions they thought i had schizophrenia
which i do not have because later you know sometimes by um mental health conditions their symptoms are very similar so it's very sometimes difficult to put your finger on it that this is it it might take months or years to come to a full diagnosis i have a friend whose diagnosis has changed over the years now my life became you have to take this medicine to be well and i did not like it i didn't understand how my 20 21 year old friends get to live a life without medication and i have to go for therapy review appointment to me that pretty much sucked and so um i remember um hating going to that hospital seeing that psychiatrist that psychiatrist too i didn't really like him much because i felt like he did not break the news to me well when i say break it like make me understand that the medication will help me not damage me like he didn't break that news to me well i talk more about it in my open letter to psychiatrists in another video and so a few i think a few weeks later my mom was like oh there's this doctor in our neighborhood she has seen a, a mental health professional <laughs> signboards mental health professional signboard in our neighborhood she doesn't know where so we should just drive ar around and look for it and that's how i came across dr may Callen with caesar and she became my friend and she recommended another psychiatrist for me and i was then told auntie may really observed me and i i wasn't going to see her as a client it was more like a friendship but because i was spending more time with her she was seeing she was seeing me more regularly she could just tell that no this is bipolar disorder and she told my parents and then later on i think she told me to i have forgotten sometimes these things feel like a little bit of a blur but i remember when i found out i'm like okay i have bipolar disorder end of story i don't need it then but i did it really hurts to find out i had this condition i could not understand why at this time in my life i have a mental health condition so dr jima was the new psychiatrist she introduced me to and they they for one year i was in denial about my my diagnosis but they did their best to talk to me encourage me no matter how tough it became because i was annoying me and i know i was annoying i was I, it's like i kept making the same mistake over and over again not taking my medication failing my courses in the university spending my money getting into debt it's like one trouble after another one trouble after another when i could just be committed to therapy and committed to what i am need to understand and being committed to the medication treatment yeah so that's the story of how i came to find out that i have bipolar disorder i don't want this video to be too long so that's why you see that at some points i was going very fast and sometimes i go very slow but that's basically how i found out it's i'm just glad that for me you know sometimes people go through life for many years not understanding why their behavior is a certain way from the time my the depression started in march 2015 and me getting a diagnosis like august september 2015 it's it's it was a good thing but for some other people it may take many years for them to get it so that's how i know god was in this story god was ordering my steps god was making sure that i had proper care god was making sure he put the right people in place when things didn't feel like it's working so god is a huge part of my road to recovery and i thank god for the lives of my family members the support and i just thank god for his provision so that's how i came to find out that i have bipolar disorder so people say that finding out the diagnosis is like solving half of the problem and it helps you to even know how to live well in a sense that you know it makes you very conscious i mean just like knowing you have a physical condition it helps you to be very mindful about your lifestyle and so for me finding out about my diagnosis it made a whole lot of difference even though i was in denial about it at the beginning but 
we are here like eight nine years later hmm, in my mind uh, we are here we are here today and we are doing amazing things with our mental health advocacy and making sure we kick and reduce mental health stigma and discrimination so if you have any questions for me i would love to answer them and if there's a particular topic you would like me to talk about on the channel please drop it in the comment section i'm always open to sharing and talking about new things so you know what to do don't make me ask just do it but if you want me to say it to just comment like share subscribe and then i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching bye